Welcome back to PGH. I am your host, Coach Groves, the one and only. Today, you're going to get to watch my wonderful, awesome, and amazing fifth period class jump on this dialectical journal and show it who's boss. Hope you enjoy. Class. Yes. Class. Yes. Class, class. Yes, yes. All right. Dialectical journaling, different. One person from each group, come get one of these papers. And then go quietly back to your seat. Thank you. So everybody has one. Okay. Same thing. One person from each group. You need a minimum of four different colors. You may get as many as you want, but you need a minimum of four different ones. I need all of these put back in here when we're done. Come in. Anytime you want to. It does not matter to me. All right. So everybody's screen should be on the near pod. What I want you guys to do on this first, and, and let me say this before I tell you what to do. You know how we've done dialectical journaling, and I give you a doc, and it's got all of the different boxes, yes. and it's very structured. Some of you are going to be bothered by this. I would be. You can do it that way if you want to, but you have to make the boxes. But you don't have to make it look like that. You can make it look like whatever you want it to. Does that make sense? Yes, you sir. You can just draw all over it. It does not matter. That is a, see the, the small poster up there? Same assignment last year. That's one of my former students. I, we did the same exact thing. My instructions were make it look however you want to. I literally gave them a blank piece of paper. They looked at me like I lost my mind because they always had the boxes. I wanted to see what they would come up with. And some, many of them did exactly what she did. She still made the boxes and did the three boxes across. You don't have to do that. So here's what you're going to have to do. When we actually start the notes, I want to make sure this is really clear. When we start the notes, I'm going to use a group as an example right here. So. We go through the first slide together on ancient Greece. And we've got the first person is going to take notes. And then the, whoever is not the note taker on this piece of paper, Chase is going to start writing notes. The other people in the group, however many there are, in this case two, in most cases three, you are going to do a different journal response. And what I want you to do is try to stretch yourself a little bit. Don't just do answering, a, asking a question because it's the easiest and it takes the least amount of brain power. Like if you can make a personal connection, if you could do a prediction, if that's available based on information, 
I want you to do that. And after about four minutes, everybody's, everybody's produced their work on this paper, however they wanted to. They've got the notes, they've got both journal responses. I'm going to ask a group to share, maybe two or three groups to share. And you're going to take us through all of it. You're going to take us, I've made the notes, here they are. You tell us. I did drawing. I made an illustration. Here's, here's the boat that I drew in the mountains of ancient Greece. Does that make sense? You're just going to take us through each part and then we're going to move on. My, the end goal for me is I'm going to take all of the ones that look really awesome and we're going to hang them on the walls and even the ceiling tiles. We're going to make this place look crazy if they're good enough. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yes. So, but like everyone writes on the paper. Everyone. everyone will write for each slot. Yes. Okay. And when a group presents, we want to hear from all of them. So the first thing I want you to do is on the pick a front, and I want you to write somewhere on it any way you want to. Ancient Greece. And I'll tell you this too. There's about seven slides of notes. We're only going to do two or three today. That's it. But ancient Greece on the front and on the back, every group member's first and last name. Do that quickly. Turn your attention to the Nearpod. So it says Ancient Greece Section 1. That's where we're going to be for a couple of, at least two days in class. It, we're talking about the physical geography and the very first Greeks. It's actually ironic. The first Greeks weren't even Greek. We're going to get there in a second. So on this slide, we're going to look at it, we're going to talk about it, and then we're going to get started right nothing yet. So if you look at this, it says Section 1. Geography helped shape early Greek civilizations. Somebody raise your hand and tell me what's the first thing that you notice about this map. It's Shh. You notice the colors. All right. Why do you think, if this is all ancient Greece, why do you think there are different colors? Raise your hand. Let me call on you. Go. Maybe like different colors and like different religions. Oh. That's a good thought. Mm -hmm. Different colors could be different religions. And Braxton, it could be. It could be. Yes? Different like, uh, levels or groups of people? Different groups of people. It is that. I was going to say like landowners, so like the people who own that territory. Okay. It is that as well. Different civilizations. Different civilizations. It's all the Greek civilization, but it is different. What do you have inside of a civilization? People. Villages. What's bigger than a village? City-states. All right, very good. That's where we're going. So it says mountains cover much of Greece, so there wasn't much contact. That's why there's different colors. The mountains kept these people separate. Nobody should be writing yet. The mountains kept the people separate. They didn't have a lot of, con a lot of contact with each other. So what happened over time? They developed their own governments. And that's where you get like Athens and Sparta and the city-states in Greece. That's what made them different. It says people created their own governments. They settled in a few flat areas. There weren't very many. Here's the main point. The water, the sea. If you look at the map, there's mainland Greece, the peninsula to the north. What do you see below that? You see a bunch of islands. Are they colored? That's still Greece. All of those little tiny islands. So the water is very important. Now listen closely. They were great ship builders. People have been misunderstanding. They were, 
They were great net. <laughs> they were great navigators. Okay, they were expert fishermen. They traded on the sea. When they went to war, it was naval battles. They had armadas, boats in the water. That's where they did their fighting for the most part. Um, it says they became skilled shipbuilders and sailors. Seas were used for trade, food, and even exchanging ideas with other cultures, which is going to happen over time we're going to talk about. So raise your hand right now if you're going to be the note taker on this slide. I need one person in each group. Anybody? I need to see who you are. All right, so that is our note taker. When I say go, they're going to start writing the notes and the other people can help them. The other people are going to write down their different responses. Choose one. Don't choose the same one as someone else. Usually when we do dialectical journaling, this is the part where you're quiet. Not today. you got to talk the whole time through this and communicate. In about four minutes, be prepared to share. If you get confused, let me know. How many columns are I'll make it. How many columns are Notes, response, response, response. All of them. I'll make your first one. I'm not going to take it. I'm going to take it. No. Yes, I'm going to take it. Be weirded out. I'm just gonna get y'all getting the work done. Everybody else in the group will do a response. 
however many people you have. And make sure that there's different responses. Don't have two people predicting. Have everybody in the group do something different. All right, is anybody ready to share? Yes. Okay, sure. so I'm going to let both of these groups share, and I want to get this on camera. They can go first. All right. No. All right. So, do y'all want to stand up or do it from your desk? It doesn't matter. Stand up. All right, go up there. All right, right here in front of me, right here. Perfect. All right, class, please give them your attention. Listen up. Hey, y'all speak up so we can hear you. I have a question. Does everyone read there? Yes. So, and tell us, don't say, I drew a boat. Tell us what you did and then tell us, okay? So that makes sense. I was the other person for this particular slide, and I said, they were skilled shipbuilders and sailors. They, the islands were a good place for ships to dock. Okay. Um, I drew a picture of a ship to, and I, to symbolize like what his, sum up what his note said. Okay, can you show us? Okay. I did a question and I said, how did the Greece people learn how to build ships? Okay, good. Um, for mine, I just kind of piggybacked on what Garrett said, and I did a prediction. It says, uh, as time goes, goes uh, went on, I thought that the ships got like more, more high tech. Very good. They did. Those ships were called caravels. Very good. All right, give them a hand, guys. Good job. Caravels. All right, here we go. Attention in the front, please. All right, for the first column, I just like wrote notes. Like, I just like took the important words and, like, you know what I mean. Okay, go ahead. I draw a um, boat and then people fighting because apparently they were fighting in water. Okay, for my response, I did uh, summarization and I talked about um, how they were very skilled builders and they used to fight. Okay, will you read it to us? Um, they became skilled ship builders and when they fought their wars, they fought in the water. Okay, very good. Give them a hand. Good job. <laughs> All right, so. Before I change it, let's put all the markers down. Everybody listen. And, and this is this part's going on YouTube as well. So what I'm about to tell you is some uncommon knowledge. This is this this gets a little strange, and we're going to be mature as I tell you the story because this is the kind of stuff that if you really listen to me and you focus, you you won't forget this. This will stay with you. Like you'll remember, like, remember that time Coach Grove said this? This is one of those moments I'm telling you right now. So you guys know about a lot of the stories in the Bible. We just finished our monotheistic religion deal. The Torah, Bible, the Quran. You guys know a lot of things that's in those texts. You know some basic knowledge like, raise your hand and tell me, who received the Ten Commandments? Who's the first man created? Who, let's get a little more advanced. Who was the man after Jesus was resurrected who was a persecutor of Christians and Jesus appeared to him on a road as he was traveling to go persecute more Christians and this man was blinded and for several days... He was blind, and eventually he regained his sight, and he became a big-time follower of Jesus, and he even changed his name. Who was this person? His name was Paul. Very good. Who actually wrote most of the New Testament, okay? His name before it was Paul was what, man? Saul. All right, very good. That's when he was a persecutor. So here's an uncommon story. 
here's something that you don't really hear. And there's some theologians and there's some people that will disagree with parts of what I'm going to say, but I'm just giving you the basic gist of the story. In Genesis chapter 6, there is a word, it's called the Nephilim, N-E-P-H-A-L-I-M. It's a Greek word, okay, what we're talking about here. The Nephilim, like you guys probably know the story of God casting out one third of all the angels in heaven and he sent them to earth. They're called demons, right? Or fallen angels. Y'all know that story, right? Yes. Who was the lead angel that was cast out? Satan. He became Satan, but what was his name when he was in heaven? Does anybody know? Lucifer. Lucifer. Very good. Y'all got it. All right. So that's what I'm talking about. Well, when they came here, here's what you don't hear on Sunday when the preacher's up there preaching. The demons, the fallen angels, actually had relations with female women, humans. And they had babies. That's the Nephilim, or the Nephilim. Those are the giants in the Old Testament. They're all wicked, they're all evil, they're all super, super bad. And the world got so bad, so much evil, God was sad as He looked and saw, there's no, I only got one family that's good. That's it. Nobody else. This one dude's the only good dude in the whole world. Who was that? Noah. 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 And what did God do? He told him, he to, told him to, build the told him to build the boat, the ark. He destroyed the earth. Everybody's dead except for Noah and his family. And there's some deeper theological reasons for this story and why all of that happened. Uh, and the Bible tells us that in the end days, the Nephilim will return. What on earth, Coach Groves, does this story have to do with the ancient Greeks? Here it is. The first civilization in ancient Greece, they're called the Minoans. They're named after their king, Minos. Minos had a beautiful wife, a queen. He had this beautiful palace. He was rich. Everybody loved him. Uh, he lived on the island of Crete, this huge island. South. You can see it on the map. Far to the south, it's Crete. The Bible even talks about the island of Crete. The Bible actually says that nothing good comes from Crete but evil and wickedness, interestingly enough. And it's, you know, to be called a Cretan, someone from Crete, you've ever heard that term before? That's like a bad thing to call somebody, you Cretan. Okay, that's a bad thing. So anyways, the king, they were, they were polytheistic. What does that mean? They believed in many gods. They believed in multiple gods. Well, one of their gods. Greek gods, guys. Y'all know the Greek gods. Who, which Greek gods was the god of the water? The ocean? Poseidon. So Poseidon gives the king Minos this beautiful, snow-white, beautiful, majestic bull. And, he's like, and Poseidon gives him this bull so that the king can sacrifice that bull to pay homage to Poseidon. Poseidon gave him the most perfect bull in the world. Kill this bull for me. Worship me. I'm a god. Okay? Well, as King Minos looked at the bull, he didn't want to kill it. It was too beautiful. So he decided not to. This angered Poseidon, who cast a spell on the queen and made her fall in love with that bull. She had a relationship with that bull, and the offspring was a half-man, half bull called the Minotaur. Minotaur. The bull head with the human body. Underneath the King, King Minos' palace was a labyrinth. What is a labyrinth? A, a huge maze that you're not going to escape ever. You're there, you're not going to find your way out. You're going to get lost. And he put the Minotaur in that maze, in that labyrinth. And all, for years he would put his enemies in there and they spent the remainder of their life literally sneaking around, hiding from the Minotaur, scavenging, trying to eat stuff, because when the Minotaur found them, he would rip their arms apart, he would rip their bones off, eat the flesh off their bones, and just devour them. Does that make sense? How is that story similar to the one from the Bible? Well, their God didn't give what... 
Sacrifice? Uh, the person didn't do what their God wanted them to do, and then their God punished them, and <coughs> God punished us. Uh, yeah. Well, he only punished one person. How's that story? Here we go. But instead of demons, Poseidon sent the bull. Right. Um, so basically, the demons were like the bad, and then Poseidon sent the bull to work the pain to kill. But they never did that. Right. Okay. So then they were, yep. Good point. What's the most? What? Let me ask you this way. What's the the weirdest thing about either story? The weirdest thing. Yeah, you could just you could just say it plainly, guys. Somebody had relations with someone else, and was was this relation a normal thing? No, no. no this we're talking about a spiritual being or something totally different. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We're not talking about in either case. We're not talking about man and man or human and human. You see what I'm saying? So that's so you see how the Greeks took a story from the Bible and they changed it and twisted it. They got a little mythology in it. A little, a little history in it, and some art in it, and they made their own story. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right, so these first people are called the Minoans. So it's trying to seem, so it's trying to seem that it's true? No, it's a legend. Okay. Yeah, not true. Okay. No, there may be parts of it that are true. I'm trying to, like, make it seem. Yes, absolutely. All right. Coach. Class. Yes. Let's go through this real quick. It says Minoan society. The first two main societies were the Minoans and the Mycenaeans. I mentioned this earlier in class. The Minoans were not Greek. They didn't speak the language, so they're not considered Greek. They were the first civilization there, but they're not Greek. The first Greeks were the Mycenaeans. So the Minoans lived on this island of Crete where we're talking about. They're expert shipbuilders, mariners, navigators, whatever you want to call them. Uh, it says one of two things happened to them, and maybe it's a mixture of both. There was either an earthquake at the bottom of the ocean floor that caused these huge waves, and it devastated the island of Crete. A lot of their civilization was wiped out. Or they were attacked by their neighbors, the Mycenaeans, who was a warring faction, and they took them over. It's probably likely that both happened. Probably both of these things happened to them. So that's why they just up and vanished pretty much and became nothing. Um, the finding... you listen? <laughs> All right. Class, attention in the front. Here we go. Okay. So, Shh. we said that the first two main societies were the Minoans and the Mycenaeans. And then we said the Minoans spent most of their time trading at sea with uh, wood, olive oil, and pottery. They weren't considered Greek, and they were victims of a huge volcano that was on their island. Okay. And then I, I did like the interpretation, or not like the, like the, like the reflection. There we go. And I said they were the first civilizations, but they didn't speak Greek. I made a prediction. I said, I think they already ate lots. Okay, give them a hand, guys. All right, let's right here. Good job. I thought we were going to get to go. Sorry. All right, shh. Listen up, please. Mycenaeans. Mycenaeans spent time sea trading, carrying important supplies, and they also weren't considered. Uh, for my response, I I did the um, reflecting, and I said I think that these civilizations must have been lonely. And for me, I did analyzing, and I said the Minoans weren't considered Greek because they didn't speak the language. But, and I also forgot to put that they were the first of the organization. All right, give them a hand, guys. Good job.
right, give me a give me a thumbs up if this note taking was good. Give me a side if it was middle. Give me a down if it was not. I want to I want to get your thumbs. All right, very good. PGH, say, we're out. We're out.